Welcome again to the AAPA's Quick Case for the Month. I am Aaron Bright from the AAPA Pants Pannery Review and Hippo Education. With me, I have John Maybe. Hi there. I have Kim Casson and Jill Tanner, our PA resident experts in studio today. Thank you for coming. Hi, Aaron. And I have Tom, who is not a medical professional and should not be trusted. Let's get on to the question of the month. Remember that the idea behind this is to present a case-based question and learn a little bit and maybe prepare ourselves for the boards. Are you ready for the question? Let's do it. Here we go. An eight-month-old girl is brought to the emergency department by her parents because she has had a fever, a runny nose, and a cough for the past three days. Over the past day, she has also had progressive difficulty feeding, a temperature of 38.3 Celsius or 101 Fahrenheit for your U.S. people. Physical examination shows an infant in moderate respiratory distress with nasal flaring and expiratory wheezing. Chest x-ray study shows hyperinflation and peribronchial thickening. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So, John, as usual, we have to sort of figure out what, uh, how to approach these questions. Right. Right? And as we usually say, the vignette has everything you need. We're not trying to trick you. There's no red herring in there. Indeed it does. It might be a good idea to kind of come up with a question before you read the answers, because that way you won't be fooled by any of the foils that may take you in a different direction. So let's kind of walk through this question. Ladies, what do you think about this patient? We've got some key things that we're seeing in there. And really the key things to me are respiratory stress, mm-hmm. nasal flaring, yep. wheezing. It's usually a key piece of a diagnosis and peribronchial thickening. So what comes to mind when you think of that? Anything in particular come to mind in your differential diagnosis? Well, that peribronchial thickening is a pretty important clue. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to look for something bronchial. Mm-hmm. Yep, I like that. Production. Right, bronchial. That's a good, that's well, a good point, right? She's going to look for something bronchial. I am. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And so I think that we are dealing with bronchiolitis. What do you think, John? Sounds great. That sounds right. So let's scroll ourselves up. We've got, we got some answers. Asthma, well, that's wheezing. But I don't know, peribronchial thickening, it doesn't quite fit the right, uh, the right clinical scenario. There's a fever here. I don't think asthma's the right thing. Bronchiolitis is what we kind of think it is. Mm-hmm. A foreign body aspiration would show a lot of different things on x-ray, and they'd probably give you a much, uh, you know, a one-sided hyperinflation, or they'd show you an x-ray with a foreign body. Uh, pertussis has another sequence of, of, um, of clinical clues that mm-hmm. we could look mm-hmm. into, and those aren't present here. And then a pneumonia is kind of more straightforward. So I think bronchiolitis is our answer. Yeah, so I think the standard way to look at these things is, again, all the information that's presented in the, the vignettes is important information. Yeah. The test item writers really aren't there to, like, fake you out or to trick you to, yeah. you know, lead you down some uh, yeah. path. So, again, the age is important in this particular case, right? Yep. The clinical uh, right. information that you get. And this also has some information from an imaging study. So part of what mm-hmm. they're looking for is your ability to integrate all the clinical information along with laboratory data, right, to come that's to really this particular diagnosis. So the other thing too is they're looking for which of the following is the most likely diagnosis and what's key to answering these questions is always making sure that you answer what the test item writers are asking you for. That's right. right? So here it's pretty clear because it really is a list of of diagnosis and you want to think about most likely. So even though you may have something that's close, you always want to answer the one that the, is the like the, the best test, right, fits, of the answers right? yeah. of the answer choices that th- that you're given. Right. So they don't ask you what is the exact diagnosis? What is the most likely diagnosis? Could it possibly be asthma? Sure, it could possibly be asthma. Could it be a foreign body? Sure, it could. It could it be pertussis? Sure, that's exactly. possible. What's the most likely thing? Bronchiolitis. Don't let them. Don't let your mind steer you away from the most obvious choice. Right. All right. All right. So let's check. We think it's bronchiolitis. We're going to answer that question and check up here and check our answer with bronchiolitis. And we are correct here, so if you're online, you're going to see the answers to the correct questions and explanations and explanations about the wrong answers, and you can study up that way. So that is it for this month's AAPA Quick Case. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope everybody has a good month. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Thank you, Tom. See you next month.